Reading reduces stress, and I for one would like to have a stress-free hot girl summer. Hi everyone, my name is Bren, and if you're new here, I like books and making videos on various things. And today, we're doing a book video. I'm new to this, so I'm kind of nervous about sharing my thoughts on books, because not everyone shares the same taste. What one person may think is a good book, another person may think is a not so good book, and that's okay, so let's get started. I am so excited for this first book. Now listen, I am not a huge fan of hardbacks. Usually when a new book comes out, I wait for the paperback version and that can take forever. But as soon as I saw this book, I just could not wait. I had to get it ASAP. And that is When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill. This is the same woman who wrote The Girl Who Drank the Moon, which is a children's book, and this is her first ever adult novel. I absolutely loved The Girl Who Drank the Moon, and this story sounds amazing as well. Imagine if you lived in the 1950s, and most of the women in your life, your mom, your sister, your aunt, all of a sudden transformed into dragons. Like, what? Okay. That sounds like a book I want to read. If you like dragons and you're looking for a feminist read that is also about love and living an authentic life, then this is the book for you. Let me go ahead and just read you the blurb. Alex Green is a young girl in a world much like ours, except for its most seminal event, the mass dragoning of 1955, when hundreds of thousands of ordinary wives and mothers sprouted wings, scales, and talons, left a trail of fiery destruction in their paths, and took to the skies. Was it their choice? What will become of those left behind? Why did Alex's beloved Aunt Marla transform, but Alex's mother did not? No one knows. It's taboo to speak of it. Forced into silence, Alex nevertheless must face the consequences of this astonishing event. A mother more protective than ever. An absent father, their upsetting insistence that her aunt never existed, and watching her beloved cousin Beatrice become dangerously obsessed with the forbidden. I am so excited to read this. This book explores a world that wants to keep women small in both their lives and their prospects. And it examines what happens when they rise together to take up the space that they deserve. This is gonna be the next book that I read after I finish my current book, which is also next on my list, and that is Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. You guys, I am having a blast reading this. This is a page turner. If you don't already know, Jurassic Park is a cautionary tale about genetic engineering involving dinosaurs in an amusement park. And of course, things go horribly wrong. There are so many perspectives in this book. You can have multiple perspectives in just one chapter. For example, the first three paragraphs were following one of the kids lost in the park, and then the next paragraph were at the lab with Dr. Wu, and then the next paragraph were at control with all the coders who are trying to figure out what's wrong with the system, and then the last paragraph were back at the park, but this time through the perspective of one of the grown-ups. Basically, so much is happening in this book. Another thing to keep in mind is that there is quite a bit of info dumping. A lot of the grown-up characters, they talk a lot in detail about things concerning math, science, coding, etc. But I appreciate it. I personally really enjoy learning all the details of how they manage to engineer dinosaurs in this fictional world and hearing all of Ian Malcolm's mathematical theories. But don't worry, there is plenty of action in this. Like I said, this is a page turner. There have even been some pretty gruesome moments in this book. Also, so far, not so many differences between the book and the movie with the beginning and the middle, but I have noticed that some of the characters in the book, they are completely different from their movie characters. So that was surprising. And I've also heard that the ending is completely different. So I'm really anxious to see how it ends. Our next book is another book to film and that is American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis. This and Jurassic Park, I had no idea were originally books. So I'm going into this with the movie version in my mind and I'm really trying not to. So this story is told in first person and we follow a man named Patrick Bateman who is a Manhattan investment banker and serial killer. Apparently the movie is nothing compared to the graphic writing of this novel. And I kind of feel like I know what to expect because I actually read another book by Brett Easton Ellis called Less Than Zero when I was the tender age of 12. That book 
me up. That was completely inappropriate for a 12 year old to read. Somehow I got my hands on it and it was really disturbing, but I enjoyed it. And now I really like disturbing stories. And I feel like if I could handle less than zero when I was 12, I can probably handle American Psycho. Okay, shifting gears to something more lighthearted, we have The 100 Year Old Man Who Climbed Out the Window and Disappeared by Swedish writer Jonas Jonasson. I am looking for a fun book to read this summer and a story about an old man who escapes from a nursing home on his 100th birthday and goes on this outlandish adventure seems like a delightful time to me. Let me go ahead and just read you the blurb so you kind of get an idea of what it's about. Desperate to avoid his 100th birthday party, Alan Carlson climbs out the window of his room at the nursing home and heads to the nearest bus station, intending to travel as far as his pocket money will take him. But a spur of the moment decision to steal a suitcase from a fellow passenger sends Alan on a strange and unforeseen journey involving, among other things, some nasty criminals, a very large large pile of cash, and an elephant named Sonia. It's just another chapter in a life full of adventures for Alan, who becomes entangled in the major events of the 20th century, including the Spanish Civil War and the Manhattan Project. As Alan's colorful and complex history merges with his present day escapades, readers will be treated to a new and charmingly funny version of world history and get to know a very youthful old man whose global influence knows no age limit. Okay, next we have The Goldfinch by Donna Tart, another book to film in which I saw the film first because I had no idea it was originally a novel. How do I keep doing this to myself? I hate watching the film before reading the book. I swear, I don't know how this keeps happening. Anyway, this story takes place in New York City and we follow a boy named Theo Decker who survives an accident that unfortunately kills his mother. And his father's not in his life, so he's taken in by this wealthy family. And as he's grieving the death of his mother, he clings on to this painting of a goldfinch. And that little painting is what sucks him into the art underworld. This is a story about loss, obsession, self-invention, and survival, and I'm really excited to read it. Our next book is called The Dream Quest of Elite Bow by Kidge Johnson. This is a revision of H.P. Lovecraft's The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath. And if you're unfamiliar with Lovecraft, he was a writer back in the 1920s who wrote a lot of supernatural and horror fiction. I really like the cover of the book. It's really pretty. It's also a very thin book. It's only like 165 pages. So in this book, we follow an older woman named Philippe Beau. She is a professor of mathematics at a women's college and she lives in the dream world, but she goes on this adventure into the waking world to track down one of her students who has run off with a man from the waking world. And the reason why she's tracking her down is because this student may be the only person who can save her community. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, because it's been a long time since I've read Lovecraft, but I don't think he had any female characters in any of his stories. And that's why I'm really excited to read this revision following a female protagonist. Our next book is a middle grade, and that is The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin. I'm really excited to read this book again. I actually read this book in middle school for my English class, and I remember really enjoying it. And I completely forgot about it until I recently stumbled upon it at the store. So this story is a mystery and it's about a man named Samuel W. Westing who is a millionaire and who really enjoys games, but he dies. And we are then introduced to 16 unlikely people who gather for his will. And if I remember correctly, because he likes games, he ends up pairing everyone up in his will into teams, and they must solve a puzzle if they wish to inherit his vast fortune. The story also begins on the 4th of July, so it's got that summer vibe, and I feel like I'm going to have a wonderful time reading this book again. Our next book is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Now I've heard a lot about this book. It's very hyped up and I've been really curious to read it for the longest time and hopefully I'll get around to it this summer. So this novel follows a woman named Monique who is a struggling uh, journalist trying to make a name for herself. And one day she is picked by the reclusive 1960s Hollywood star Evelyn Hugo to tell the truth about her glamorous and scandalous life. This is a book about fame, love, and scandal, but I've heard that it's a very touching story, and so I am preparing myself 
to cry. I don't know why, but I just love books that make me cry. I don't have a lot of reasons to cry in real life, but sometimes I just want to cry. So I pick up a sad book and sometimes I pick it up on accident. I end up picking a book not knowing that it's going to devastate me in the end. And honestly, it's the best surprise. Okay, my last book on my TBR for June and July is Just Kids by Patti Smith. This is an autobiography. Patti Smith, who is a poet and a performer, documents her blossoming relationship with Robert Mapplethorpe, who's a photographer. This takes place in New York City in the late 1960s and 70s. This is a love story, but it's also about art. It's about their struggle to emerge as artists and Patti Smith is clearly an artist through and through. I actually have an artist in my life, my older brother, he's a poet and an author, and I've seen how much he loves his craft and the sacrifices he's been willing to make just to keep doing it. I really admire artists because it's tough out there. And so I feel like I'm really going to appreciate this book. So these are all the books that I'm hoping to read this summer. Probably not gonna get through them all. I'm a pretty slow reader. Well, no, that's a lie. I'm not a slow reader. I just like to take my time with books. I read one book at a time. Hopefully I can get through some of them. Anyway, I would love to know what your reading plans are for this summer and let me know if you've read any of these books that I mentioned. I would love to know your thoughts on them without any spoilers, of course, please and thank you. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for watching today's video. I appreciate it and as always, I appreciate you.